class, it is I, the great Dr. Bright, here with my friends, uh, Cheery, a random annoying child, and Hatchet. Why did you put an inflection on that like you were being sarcastic when you <laughs> called us your friends? I didn't mean to. Do, do you have do you have something to say to us, Bright? <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> I have found a horrifying fact. awkward bean, and she is doing her best. Anyway. Her awkward bean best. On to this SCP. Mm. SCP-1124 are metallic objects found near research base Ilena on Redacted. The first instances of SCP-1124 were recovered from canisters underneath data expunged from mountain range. Entities contained by the canisters have the appearance of cephalopods weighing exactly 1.0268 kilograms. Instances of SB1124 are impervious to heat and pressure. Each is otherwise non responsive to external stimuli, save for physical contact with biological matter, which will cause instances of, of SB1124 to activate and death expunge. Reaction to biological matter originating from a sapient creature tends to elicit a more violent response. Though observations are performed daily through a viewing win window in tank 1124-C by monitoring cameras, a definite shape cannot be su sustained. The most recent appearance appears similar to a larval grub, SP1124-C, in all instances metallic in appearance. The entity frequently gnaws and consumes the casing in its containment unit, although the amount of damage taken is acceptable due to the density and thinness of the film used to line the chamber. Further research into containment is deemed necessary as the creature has been shown to grow in minor increments than more material is consumed. A tear located in research or redacted bodysuit during transfer, allowed data expunged, activating one instance of SB-1124. Security cameras show the entity quickly gnawing itself out from the inside of its alloy casing and then launching itself into the mouth of one researcher redacted. This method of mobility is believed to be a spring-like motion using its appendages, but this is still unconfirmed. Following containment procedures for Researcher Redacted sealed himself inside Unit 1124-C and activated the failsafe mechanism, effectively containing SP-1124-C. X-23C Alenia Lander transmitted data at 13.31.45. Dr. Sanders Audiolog reporting successful mission. Samples are being housed. What we think are glass can canisters were found beneath the data expunge mountain range. 84 south, 23 east on your grids. Estimated 4 minutes before we reached the rover. 13, 34, 23. Reached rover ahead of schedule. Everyone is present and accounted for. Estimated 1 hour before we, re we reach Elena. 14-25-12. We're in an airlock now. We've dumped our cargo. Researcher Breen reports he is delivering the race recovery canister to Dome Theta. 14-40-02. Signing off. Cassandra signing off. 3-35-10. Met with Breen and, and he hasn't said anything about the canisters yet. Saving the best for last, he says. Don't know how he can resist something that bizarre. Guess that's what we got him up here. 6 58 19. Meeting with Breen again. Let me turn up the transmitter here. Say something, Breen. Greetings from space. You silly bitch, Breen. 7 05 19. He's got a few of the things. That were inside the canisters laid out on a table. Breen says the canister itself wasn't glass though. Not sure what the material was. The canisters are egg shaped, no markings, smooth. They have lids on their ends that detach and reattach, giving a gentle pull. 
There are no adhesives, no screw tops, or anything like that. They just come off and on. CR71022. The things inside the eggs look like s silver squids. Their limbs are segmented. Can't make out the any eyes or mouths. Green shook one around, but the limbs don't wiggle like we expect them to. They're stiff. 71201. Green can't begin dissection. Their outer shells are too hard. Thinking they might just be figurines or something like that. 72645. Green has blasted these things with heat, froze them, even put them in a crusher. They don't seem to react at all. They just squeeze off anything we throw at them. 72730. He joked that we should sneeze on them. Green gave me the honors. 72823. Couldn't sneeze, so I just spat on them. They didn't seem to be affected. I think they might just be figurines. 72856. Mother Mercy. One of those appendages is actually moving. Oh boy, that scared the shit. One. Zero 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 zero. Indecipherable noise. Log terminated. And now for the audio log, which you guys can't hear sadly, because fuck Discord. Yay. That for a second. All right, that was it with the log audio log. And there you go. It's basically just a cephalopod that apparently goes inside of humans. Do you get anything out of that? Uh. I like to do it via Twitch, and it sounds kind of like someone pouring something into a bowl. So. Well, they are metallic. Um, you might want to rephrase that. <laughs> what you said before, Bright. What do you mean? I'm confused. The centipedes are going inside of people? No, the cephalopods. Centipedes? Cephalopods. Where'd you get second? Cephalopods. It says cephalopods. Entities contained by the can canisters have appearance of cephalopods. No, what I'm saying is, wow. you, you're, you're, the way that you said that would probably appeal to Pika. Let's put oh. it that way. Fuck's what sakes. The, what is Pika into? What the fuck? What? Silence. Silence. We cannot have an in depth discussion about this. Point what being, phrasing. Anyway, um, Jesus I would. Christ. Probably go certain groups because, like, mm -hmm. it would be really dangerous if it got out, but it still seems to be fairly well contained. Yeah. Even though it's like constantly eating its containment, though, which is worrying. Like, yeah, it's it's worrying, but I mean, this is the SCP Foundation. They they have a manner. In which they can manage to consistently keep the old man contained. Yeah. They have enough resources to deal with this thing. Also, As for... their Twitter account is its own. The old man is a little easier to contain than the hard to destroy reptile, which they also can Yeah, contain. true. Yeah, true. Though, I, well, I guess we should probably also consider like what would be the logical situation if it did fully get out and determine that by its danger level like how how quickly would it destroy things and kill people and even then i'm like 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 it's freaky it's mm -hmm. giant or it's 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 alien cephalopods that, that just spontaneously force their way into a human that's also not how I meant to. Damn it! We know what I mean. Uh, like, like it's still a massive threat, but I don't see it like spontaneously traveling far enough to get beyond continent. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, oh. like, what what do y'all think? I, I'm still thinking certain group. I just put it there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, like, two out of four people have made it sound dirty in some aspect at some point talking about it. Yeah, anyway. Okay, I mine was... Technically, it was always unintentional. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The next SCP is nicknamed the Entrepreneurial Spirit. What? Okay. Why? Just let Why is that an SCP? Right. Hold on. Also, it was uh, reclassified to a Keter Esoteric class. Oh. What's esoteric class again? It's basically different. Hold on, I can look up esoteric, the definition of it. Esoteric object classes, also occasionally referred to as narrative cl uh, classes, are object classes that do not fall into any of the above sections. They are generally only used once and are created to further the narrative of, of in a particular SCP. So basically, it just makes it a, a story. In a way. Uh, gotcha. So basically, it's basically the SCP got turned into a story. Oh, hmm. maybe. Anyway, I like large convoluted oh. words that hurt my brain. <laughs> I'm not gonna even tell Hatchet that there's like more than like twenty five new classes. <laughs> what do you mean you're not even going to tell me that? You just told me that by saying that. No, yeah, you didn't. Exactly. You heard nothing. <laughs> There's even you a can't class gaslight just... like me. There's actually a class that's just called Anomalous. I'm not gaslighting yeah, I you. That. I am actively lighting you on fire. There is a difference. In a class that's called At Home Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> That bright is a chaotic woman and blonde. Anyway, yes. Alright. SCP-1141 is a phenomenon at, in which an instance of SCP-1141-1 instantaneously appears at a public zoo in the New e England region of the United States. This occurs approximately 30 minutes prior to the opening time of the zoo in question. The infrastructure and nearby structures will be altered to accommodate SP-1141-1's presence, as well as maps of, of the zoo. SP-1141 will only occur under the following conditions. No instances of SP-1141-1 are operational. Less than 20% of the zoo grounds are covered in snow. The temperature has been above 15 degrees Celsius during operating hours for the past week. At least 250 days have passed since the demanifestation of the most recent instance of SCP-1141-1. Instances of SCP-1141-1 take a, the form of a fully staffed, supplied, and operational restaurant that is thematically consistent with the other restaurants in the zoo and with the area of the zoo in which it's located. Food served at SCP-1141-1 1-1 is consistent with the foods served at similar establishments, with the exception of each instance offering guacamole with pineapple chunks. Food and other supplies will appear as needed inside SB 1141-1 out of the view of the public. Staff of the zoo will not demonstrate any familiarity with SB 1141-1. All individuals staffing SB 1141 1 are anatomically and behaviorally consistent human beings and will run SB 1141 1 to the best of their ability. These individuals are fluent in English and knowledgeable in operation of SB 1141 1. 
They are either unwillingly or unable to answer personal questions or questions pertaining to the nature or the origin of SP-1141 death. It, they will not leave SP-1141-1 willingly. Instances of SP-1141-1 have an unpredictable and often dangerous effect on their surroundings. The exact cause of this is not known with, with certainty. However, analysis has led several researchers to propose that instances of SP-1141-1 do not necessarily operate under physical laws or constraints present in our dimension prior to their manifestation. If an instance of SP-1141-1 is rendered inoperable or in the presence causes obvious injury to a person visible from SP-1141-1, the instance will demanifest within the next 25 minutes with all infrastructure structures and maps of the zoo returned to their previous condition. All food items sold by SP-1141-1 will remain and may continue to demonstrate anomalous properties. Wait, did you say the food it has anomalous properties? Yeah, hold on. I just got an event log. Event log SP-1141-1. All locations and several manifestations have been removed from this document as per level 2 probationary clearance protocols. This document will serve to illustrate the effects of SP-1141. It should not be taken as a comprehensive list of SP-1141 events. Year July 1985 Event Accurate description of SP-1141-1 could not be gained. Instance of all of its contents manifested at approximately 5,000 degrees Celsius. Despite this, it appeared to be fully functional and did not combust. The instance disappeared after after its foundation crumbled, resulting in structural collapse. Fire caused by SB 1141-1 destroyed several animal enclosures and injured four park employees before being extinguished. Year June, I mean, June 1990. Event SP 1141-1 manifested as the Amazon Basin Cafe. While the building material remained intact, SP 1141-1 appear to experience gravitational force approximately 2.3 times stronger than Earth's surface gravity. Two orders of french fries were, were procured prior to SB 1141-1's disappearance due to an inability of its staff to serve customers. Testing indicated that this food had no greater mass than comparable french fries, yet weighed 2.3 times as much as their mass would indicate. June 1991 Event. SP 1141 1 was entitled A Grizzly Tail. The instance was found to be fully operational and not immediately dangerous. A variety of food items were purchased before SP 1141 1's disappearance was induced by the placement of foundation guards to prevent entry. Analysis of food indicated that it, its D. Brogyle wavelength was approximately 1 centimeter. Despite having normal mass, the food has been designated as a separate anomalous item and is contained at Site 86. April 1992 Event SP-1141-1 was not detectable aside from alterations to infrastructure. Maps of, this, of the zoo marked a restaurant called Safari Grill. The changes to the zoo's infrastructure reverted two hours before opening, presumably when it became apparent that none of the zoo's patrons were aware of SP-1141-1. Later records indicate that re relatively frequent repairs to structures near this area have been necessary since this manifestation. September 1994 Event SP-1141-1 manifested as the Glacier Cafe. Reports and later analysis indicate that this instance of SP-1141-1 was subject to drastically accelerated buildup of static electricity. SP-1141-1 did not appear to be grounded further, whether conditions at the time contributed to this problem. 
17 individuals, not including the occupants of SP-1141-1, were killed by static discharge before SP-1141-1 disappeared. Addendum. Until we fully understand and can predict the properties of SCP-1141, the possible remains that it could trigger a catastrophic event such as an antimatter explosion or vacuum, uh, vacuum mass stability event with no forewarning. I formally recommend fast-tracking research that could be useful in producing the means necessary to neutralize SCP-1141. Dr. Itchman. Approved. Dr. Foster. So this SP is meant to be killed. They want it oh. dead. Well, oh, yeah, hi, Darnie. But also remember, there's one food item they didn't describe besides saying oh. it has its own uh, rule. It has its own, like, lock-up thing. Yeah. What? Just one piece of food. I, I do not blame them for wanting to destroy it, but the question is, how do you destroy it? I don't know. I mean, Are obviously this is kind of dangerous. It looks like it's slowly progressing and become more dangerous with each manifestation. Yeah. I mean, the last I one, it killed 17 people. Yeah. Hmm. Here's my idea. Make sure that every zoo in New England at all times has at least 21% of their grounds covered in imported snow. <laughs> Wait, does fake snow work, though, is the question. Doubt it. Yeah. No, but we could try uh, it. Makers. They're technically snowmakers. Wait, I just realized the first manifestation of it was literally 5,000 degrees Celsius. How hot is that in Fahrenheit? Oh shit! Yeah, let me, let me go ago. check that. That is hotter than the sun. Hot is that one Pokemon from Pokemon? Uh, the Mall Argo? It's a fucking Let's snail. Let's see. Uh, and thirty-two degrees in Fahrenheit. Yeah. Let's see. Heat of the sun. Maybe I'm wrong, and that is hotter than the sun. Uh, it's just slightly colder than the sun. The sun is about ten thousand degrees Fahrenheit. And what was I? I didn't fully hear the number that there was Fahrenheit. Uh, Nine thousand thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit. Jesus. So it's a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, cooler than the sun. What, Jerry? Jerry, you fucking died. Wait, Discord is muting me? I guess. Again? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. I said 932, not 9,000. Oh. Wait, no. I had it open, though. Oh. Uh, okay, so, so it said 5,000 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Yeah, conversion via oh, Google. I says... said 500. Oh. No, it's 5,000. Oh. oh. Yeah, so it's 9,032 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. That, that just leaves me to wonder why did it not just annihilate everything in that surrounding area with that much heat? To be That's just it average Florida heat. Did that, or the SCP Foundation uh, found a way to avoid that? Because yeah, it, it said no like deaths were listed. Well, then I have to say the SCP Foundation probably worked hard because with that heat, you could literally be blinded by being near it. Now, they probably did quite a bit to uh, get that instance out of there pretty damn quickly. But it's also important to mention that, like, technically there's a lot of things that end up being hotter than that, that you can survive. 
like for instance a capitation bubble which is what yeah. the mantis shrimp causes uh those I'm things are actually hotter than the than the sun I'm gonna and point it's out just though, on the that small. the the animals the those shrimp hit with that attack do not survive oh they no they actually the oh no for the most part they tend to survive the attack itself they just get severely stunned because you just got point blank blasted with a tiny bubble of air that... videos of them like literally fall apart from the attack though I, I think that's like animals without like a hard shell uh no i've seen like a fish like just a normal ass fish survive it well oh whatever how did we start talking about fish with this fucking SAP? <laughs> Because I started I thinking mean, about capitation bubbles. Maybe it depends on the durability of the animal, on if they can survive it or not. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. Also, also, where the fuck do we put this? Because it seems like getting worse and worse. I think worst case scenario, it's a ZK. Yeah, because it did say it could end the world, right? I agree. Also, I feel like all those zoos in that area need to get the snow machines. <laughs> snow machines. Wait, yeah, wait, like actually. Snow machines that can make snow. A lot of snow resorts have them because the mountains don't have snow as much as customers want the snow. Yeah, yeah. so like literally a containment procedure here is just mandate that all New England zoos have snow machines and always keep at least twenty one percent of their grounds covered in snow. When I was a kid, I thought New England was a state, like New Mexico. Hey, what the fuck? Uh, it is not. <laughs> anyway, it's a region. Yeah, I kind of do agree with this. Like, it is getting stronger, <laughs> and that's worrying. <laughs> Oh yeah, and to clarify, I'm thinking ZK rather than XK. Because worst comes to worst, this could cause something that actually ends reality. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it already manipulated gravity in one of its events. Yeah, like, this is... The upper limits of how dangerous this is are nearly incalculable. Yeah, <laughs> which is terrifying. <laughs> so yeah, I think this absolutely belongs up there right alongside uh, the um, set of words that if you say it too much will end reality. So we, ha we have a restaurant and a set of words. <laughs> yes. Realism is a bitch, isn't it? <laughs> Oh. oh, talking about capitalism, fun fact, they're making a squid game uh, into reality for reality TV. Horrifying. Yes. I have no frame of reference because I never watched Squid Game. Same. Squid Game is pretty much criticizing the fact that we have a super capitalistic world and it's a bunch of contestants uh, that are in like really fucked up situations uh, and like money wise. Um, to, so that they can, like, they earn the money, but everyone dies except for one person. Uh -huh. And they all do it for rich people. Uh, rich people's entertainment, and the rich people are betting on their lives. So, Hunger Games, but capitalism. Hunger Games is, like... Hunger Games, <laughs> it's, it's Hunger Games, but, like, better? Like, it's <laughs> not teenagers, it's adults. And Hunger Games still, like, fundamentally had a large amount of criticism of capitalism to my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. the, 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 I don't know. Anyway, on to the next SCP. SCP-1155 manifests as a work of street art slash graffiti, depicting the form of a humanoid creature with sinewy forelimbs, claw-like hands, and the head and feathers of an owl. Oh, hell yeah, the predatory street art. I love this one. The depicted pose is variable, but tends towards a predatory stance, 
with eyes that appear to track the viewer. Anyone viewing this image directly will experience a compulsion to investigate it further. Victims describe a nervous fascination and desire to move closer. This can be resisted with effort, especially if the subject is aware of SP-1155's anomalous properties. If a subject approaches to, uh, to within 2 meters and is not in line of sight of another person, they will be subjected to a violent attack, suffering severe lacerations, dismemberment of e extremities, full or partial removal of soft body parts, and penetrating head trauma consistent with those that would be inflicted by a large beak and or talons. The attack generally takes about 6 seconds to conclude, upon which both SP-1155 and the victim will vanish, and SP-1155 will reappear elsewhere in the usual manner of a relocation event within 7 days. Attacks can be halted before this event by re-establishing line of sight to the victim, but this is not recommended. Attacks that track where the victims are taken by equipping test subjects with GPS locators have failed. Based on testing, tested interruptions performed at predefined intervals, the attack follows a defined pattern. The victim will, will first be restrained and the eyes and tongue will be removed, rapidly followed by the amputation of the hands and feet. The victim will then be disemboweled and, and the intestines and stomach removed. Death usually falls due to the shock or rapid exacerbation, but only if the attack is interrupted by visual contact. The fate of the victim who disappear along with SB-1155 at the conclusion of the attack is unknown. And there you go. Oh, certain groups. Yeah, but also, what the fuck? Yeah. Are you okay? Dragon, there is nothing normal in the SCP universe. Get used to it. I know, I know that. But also, what the fuck? <laughs> Bright is right, so if you expect normal in the SCP Foundation, you'll always be very disappointed. Oh, yes. I, I lost well, that expectation when I found out that Clef was a person. Wait, no. Yeah. Actually, yeah. actually... I no, we're like, actually sort of wrong. Clef. There's actually a 105 council member that was put in because they have no anomalous powers. And that's their only reason. Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? <laughs> because they, they need someone because they need someone who isn't like a fucking mm -hmm. demigod to balance things out. Yeah, they literally they said he's so he's out. he is so anomalous. They are so anomalous that they're not anomalous. <laughs> <laughs> That's their anomalous trait is that they're not anomalous. They would be surrounded by demigods and they would be in charge of so much. That that really is the case, isn't it? Yeah. Being not anomalous in that state is an anomaly in itself. Yeah. <laughs> I am concerned. About the SCP Foundation. Don't be concerned. We're the good guys. Are you though? Yes. We do do some questionable stuff, but yes, we are. Yeah, you know, uh, like just people that were ha so happened to be born with like powers and shit. Like yes, they're just average fucking okay. people. We're also the people that give what was once a chair therapy after a certain group put it through the mulcher and it has PTSD. We help it feel better. Also, you were the. Though so we also have to remember that, like, with the water nymph, they did torture. They do torture people. <laughs> Procedural one ten month. <laughs> sometimes, like with with things like the water nymph, sometimes you need to do bad things to find out what it can actually do and. While that does look bad sometimes, they eventually left her alone. I, I hope Jer Jerry didn't hear what I said. What did you say? Discord cut you out. I, I, I coughed. You keep cutting out, uh, too. I, I coughed and said Procedure 110 Montauk. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. That's literally, 
They admit it in somewhere else that uh, procedure uh, Montauk, like. Yeah. They exist. literally uh, explain that the last bride, uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't Never mind. exist. Let's not get into that. Let's not get into the SCP lore. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah. Next. I would just like oh. to I would just like to say I don't think that it's a greater good to engage in torture to find out the extent of a being's abilities yeah, when you could yeah. just leave the being alone yeah. and keep an eye on them. <laughs> I agree. That leads this to is... things ha happening unexpectedly. Like yes, if you don't but know what is they it do, then you don't know what they'll do to other people. Yes, but is it morally justifiable to engage in torture of a sentient being to get that information, especially if you don't have direct reason to think that they are hostile? Like, hey, if you put, like, le like, let me put it this way. Is it moral to torture a person to find out whether or not they are dangerous to society rather than just let them do their thing because by the same a, logic we example of why these things are necessary even if it doesn't seem like that way on an outside perspective one example no. would be a moose that may seem like harmless at first because moose are generally very chill animals that will very rarely attack people but there are instances where people literally harass moose so much that they get angry and attack. And when they get angry and attack, they go from harmless to they will, if not stopped, destroy every bone in that person's body. Yes. And but is it those things, if left out there, we do not know who will interact with it or if they'll do worse things than the SCP Foundation. We do not know what will trigger it. We will, we, and because we don't know what it could do, we don't know what it would do in response and in the outside world where well, many people could get hurt. Also, with the torturing yeah. thing, uh, not many SCPs are fully tortured. It's, it depends on the scientist. Some scientists well, are pieces of shit. <laughs> well, yeah, and Laugh. that's my point. They end up being pieces of shit and then being a part of a broader system. Those ones that are pieces of shit tend to typically not get a lot of projects with the with testing SCPs. And actually, yes, they... and actually, a few of them get reclassified as D class if they do go too far. Well, yeah, yeah but still, like there was one that was specifically put to D class for the horrible things he did. And then assigned to that uh, one cannibal. Yeah. Ferdinand. Yeah. Also, Ferdinand are we forgetting the fact... Them. Are we forgetting the fact that the SCP Foundation has openly admitted to committing war crimes? Did I... Oh, damn, I think I already have this brush. Son of a bitch. Like... Do I think... Like, what, what I'm trying to say is... As far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of things that the SCP Foundation that does, that are not in the slightest morally justifiable. I just remembered one. Bright's brother. I think brother. Little brother? You do I realize think. Jack Bright fixed, sort of fixed that problem? Did they fix that? Oh. Yeah, basically, I think they, uh, it was either heavy autism or some other really bad brain disorder. Had them fix it, so their brain could so his brother's brain capacity was so low they have no idea what's going on. Yeah. CP Foundation wanted to use him for horrible, painful things, and so Jack's like, you know what? I can't stop them, but I can make it so my brother does not feel it. Yep. And uh, That's still fucked up. It was the only way up. out. That's it was the, like... Dragon, it was the only way out for him. Yeah, There's no mean, other choice. If you think about that, would you want your brother to be tortured and have no way to stop it, or would you want your brother to not experience pain? Why is the brother being tortured in this it's, situation? But that's also, you know, really an amazing amount of healing oh. ability. Basically, he's such an amazing healer 
the SCC Foundation wants to use him forever, but the oh, drawback no. to that is that it that he takes on everything he feels. Yep. So he literally had to do that to save his brother from pain. We got heavily sidetracked. I, I think we justifiably so. Oh. Let's get off the moral quandary of the SCP Foundation's <laughs> actions as well as you know what, what Dragon do for his brother to keep him from horrible pain. Dragon, if you want to yeah. question more of the moral stuff, talk to ethics committee. The uh, ethics committee. The I, <laughs> i.e. that one group that barely gets talked with and has next to no power compared to other communities. Yeah. Okay. One SCP that tried to completely wipe out the moral, the ethics committee because it saw them as a threat. To... What is going on? Anyway, next SCP. SCP-1157 is a Caucasian male with brown hair and blue eyes. The subject's anomalous nature was first discovered when the instance of SCP-1157 designated 1157-1 surrendered to the local police in redacted Arizona claiming to be a member of a terrorist cell. When a verification event occurred with while SP-1157 was in police custody, the subject was brought to the attention of the Foundation and transferred to Sector 7 for containment and study. At intervals of approximately four weeks, all instances of SP-1157 will undergo a simultaneous verification event at 3.08 a.m. EST. While SP-1157 sleeps, each subject will split into two identical instances, the event is accompanied by a burst of light and energy which disables any recording devices. Hmm. Any clothing or other items worn by SP-1157 will be de deposited on the bed underneath the subjects. Protocol G7 is to be enacted immediately after e every purification event. The containment area is to be flooded with a gaseous sedative. A security team equipped with gas masks must enter the containment's quarters and remove one of each resulting subject pairs for euthanasia, study, and disposal. SP-1157 displays a limited form of shared consciousness. While each instance exhibits their own personality and can make individual choices, they also experience the surface thoughts and impulses of all other instances. Based on subject interviews at the time of SP-1157's initial de detention, at least five purification events have already occurred during containment there have been three observed events. To the best estimation, the current status of SB-1157 is as follows. 32 instances contained. 34 instances confirmed deceased. 45 instances euth euthanized during containment. 86 instances unaccounted for. Oh, what? 05 Memo. Requests to have contained instances of SB-1157 reduced and number denied. Our sedative instances of SP-1157-1 continue to increase in number. If Gamma-7 can sufficiently reduce the number of militant instances, we may soon have a sympathetic majority capable of converting the rest. Until that point, we want SP-1157 to believe they have the upper hand. 05 Redacted So it's literally a terrorist that can multiply itself from sleeping. Yeah. But it's contained. Not all of them. Oh, it, there's 86 yeah. unaccounted for. Oh yeah. Mind and, you, uh, that's and, only thinking about them not sleeping. Yeah, yeah, like they they doubled approximately every day. They're like it's, rabbits, but it's one person. They're no, like sponge. Rabbits don't multiply that much. Even mice multiply that much. Yeah. Oh fuck. <laughs> hmm. 
In other words, if this was left unchecked, these guys could just straight up multiply until they are more numerous than humanity. Besides, wait, wait I have a question. Like, okay. Yes. Is this controllable? I mean, by you just them. yeah, by Gamma Seven. No, like, can the 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 SCP control it? Like, when it happens. As far as I know, no. Yeah. Hmm. It just always happens. And as far as it looks like from the O five, it looks like they actually want to keep doing this. Well, O five is also kind of really fucked. Well, so, the O5 sees it at this way as if they think they have the upper hand, they might start um, acting more casually, as in letting their guard down, and it might make it easier to find them. Alongside right. that, with them having a limited level of uh, interconnected consciousness, what this also means is that if they go about it correctly, you could eventually make the majority of the population of these weird ass fucking dudes uh not want to be murderous. Yeah. Yeah. So like their their basic containment strategy right now is uh give them reasons not to be terrorists. Yep. while also trying to get rid of the terrorist ones in a more subtle manner than just eliminating them all. Yeah. That said, I think that these could easily, like, if gotten out of hand, um... Again, I feel like there needs to be a in between between continent and X hit. Would these guys just completely taking over the world, like world governments, be considered an X K? Like I feel like they wouldn't just get rid of all of humanity, but they could probably cause an extreme shift in geopolitical power in an extremely detrimental manner. Well, the good news is that they're pretty much just like humans, so they could be taken care of just as easily as it killing a human. I would like to that maybe if there was something between uh, uh, XK and Continent, maybe it could be called world changing. Since, honestly, sometimes this isn't the first time something like this has popped up where it's not XK, but it's not Continent. And Probably won't be the last, let's face it. that. Are all of these change like world changes bad? Because like it doesn't always have to be bad, right? Unnecessary. I mean, if the O5 but... says it's bad, it's probably okay, this bad. This instance, this this instance is bad. <laughs> this instance at the same... is bad, but also there could be other SCPs where like they're a threat, but like they also could cause change for the good. It's kind of like they're just kind of fucky, you know? But at I the mean, same time, I dare say that the O5 Council is not necessarily a very good determiner of what is bad considering the fact that we have accounts of them literally deciding to just eliminate all emotionally connected humans. That happened! Are, are you talking about the Japanese we... and emojis? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no. Well, actually, yeah. That's also a really fucked up thing that they did. Come to think of it, but I was thinking more about we're, uh, we're, we're saying SCP five thousand like, all the time. The good guys. I was thinking more SCP five thousand. Oh yeah. Well, they were actually trying to take care of like N N Numera or whatever it's called. That was actually... yes, they were. Yeah. Yes, they were trying to take care of an SCP that had used among humanity without causing any harm previously by killing billions of people. <laughs> yeah. No, since it is morally reset, unjustifiable. Though. Yeah, no, since the world reset, though, we have no idea how it came to be. 
Yeah. And hopefully, if it does show up again, whoever's in charge of the O5 Council in this world doesn't go, you know what? Our best option is to literally genocide all humans that have emotions. Wouldn't that be most people? Yes. yes. Anyway, where should we put this fucking SCP person? That would probably be all he almost all humans. Well, basically, they were keeping alive uh, humans that were being effectively reworked to where they didn't experience emotions. I, mm -hmm. I still suggest you make something between XK and Confident. Yeah, like world changing. Something it's, that it's, like... It's, there's literally nothing that fits it besides something between those Isn't it two. technically XK world changing? XK is when basically everyone dies though, right? All humans. Or like otherwise the entirety of civilization collapses. I don't see these guys causing like a post-apocalyptic world. I see these guys causing a s massive and sudden shift in geopolitical power. I agree. I see Wait, like what? Does this guy have a name? But not like world ending. Does this guy have a name? It's more than uh. one guy technically. Well, do they have names? Or is this no. a John Doe situation? I yeah, we'll don't know. Would we'll it be an entire this... government of John Doe? I mean, yeah. Possibly. Gosh damn it, tear listing. No. Like, given given this thing's violent proclivities, I feel like it very likely could enact some level of a violent overthrow of world governments. And then who fucking knows what they're gonna do after that? Give them Which, like, give humanity... Them the like, humanity would survive. They'd just probably be dealing with a governmental system run by people that are more incompetent than the than the German party. Human changing, and they're the first person. There you go. Person. World changing. Yeah. Bam. Uh. Yeah. I'm just over here painting an evil lobster. Oh dear. Uh, so the next SCP we're going for. It already sounds fairly bad. Oh dear. Oh. The floating nuclear missile. Um. Bruh. Well, this is a pretty oh, place, no. like easy thing to uh to situate. Why don't I'm we just stuck. listen to it? Yeah. All right. SCP-1178 is a Soviet-era RT-2 intercontinental ballistic missile, manufactured sometime between 1962 and 1967. SCP-1778 is suspended exactly 1.34 kilometers in the air above Redacted, a former Soviet missile base. SCP-1178's rockets will activate intermediately, however, it has never been observed to move outside of breach events. If any vehicle or mammalian organism approaches Redacted, or SP-1178 from a distance of 200 kilometers or less, or if a broadcast contrary to standard SP-1178 uh, broadcast is made in SP-1178's range, it will begin to slowly accelerate itself from its position above the base. SP-1178 moves very slowly, with the highest speed ever obtained being an estimated 1.6 kilometers per hour. Achieved during its initial activation event, SCP 1178's acceleration is to be considered a breach event as it will cause SCP 1178's secondary event to initiate. The initiation of, of a Frisha protocol must be done within three minutes of SCP 1178's acceleration in order to be effective. SCP 1178's secondary effect will initiate in the event that the missile is able to accelerate to a speed greater than 0 0.2 km per hour. The early nuclear de detection systems of any former Soviet state will begin to indicate 
an imminent nuclear strike. Starting with radar stations, all equipment possessed by these nations will begin indicating a massive nuclear strike coming from a nuclear capable or from any nuclear capable NATO nations. When these states have gone on alert for the possibility of a nuclear strike, the equipment of any nuclear capable NATO nations will also begin to indicate an imminent nuclear strike from any country currently affected by SB-1178. Note that SB-1178 will, will only affect the early detection equipment of these countries and does not affect the actual launch devices or the commanders in charge of said devices. The Freesia Protocol calls for sleeper agents within nuclear detection organizations in various NATO and former Soviet states to sabotage the early detection systems of the countries they are working for. This is to create a plausible explanation for why these systems showed false readings. Once this has been achieved, personnel are to ignore or cast doubt on any readings detected by equipment affected by SB-1178. In the event that one nation launches a nuclear attack, the response systems of recipient nations are authorized to be disabled by Foundation agents to minimize the damage created by a nuclear strike and avert an XK scenario. Prior to SB 1178's containment, several incident incidents of near accidental nuclear strikes by world powers are reported to the Foundation by SS assets and integrated in the Soviet GRU and the American CIA, leading to the discovery and recon recognition of SB 1178 as an anomaly. A partial list of incidents caused by Ellen Sinead is included in this report. But anyway, uh, yeah. So That's it's it. just... Yeah. It's just a fucking nuke that will occasionally decide, based upon certain levels of human activity, to start moving faster and as such possibly end up triggering World War Three. Yep. Technically, you, you forgot the part where it can fly on its own and decides on its yeah. own. It's, it yeah, has its own mind and it's deciding, do I want to? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, what was it like uh, when it comes into contact with uh, mammalian things? Yeah. Which so, uh, often? Well, I mean, it's in the atmosphere. Yeah. We're all going to say XK class. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it already said XK scenario. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah. this thing left unchecked would cause world governments to decide, you know what, fuck it, and just blow up all of humanity. Good job, I humans. Mean, I would have to say, the worst kind of missile is a missile that can decide for itself if it wants to go off or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never thought I'd say that, but here we are. <laughs> Sentient it's missile like, decides to end humanity. It's a creeper. It's a literal, it's just a fucking creeper. Creeper! Anyway, let's go to the next SCP. It's, from, it's a Minecraft. It's weird. All right, anyway. Not a creeper. It's, it's infinitely times worse. It yeah. would be infinitely times worse than a creeper. Have you ever experienced Yes, that? dragon. I played Dragon. I, I know, I know. Uh, pretty much everyone here has played Minecraft. I am literally currently playing Minecraft. <laughs> anyway. It's it's like a worse it's it's the creeper's big brother then. Hush Dragon. Anyway, next yeah. SCP is SCP eleven seventy nine, also known as the Beast Below. SCP-11, like cool huh? Name. What was that? I was saying that sounds like a cool name. Yeah. SCP-1179 has not been clearly and scientifically observed since May 1962 during incident CB-1962, redacted, redacted. The original file description of SCP-1179 is as follows. SCP-1179 appears be a giant, vaguely humanoid figure carved from an unknown volcanic rock. In one hand, it holds a whip, in the other, a sword. Its face has vaguely human features, 
including a long beard, though it has two large horns like those of a ram flaking its face. 1179 appears over 30 meters from head to toe, with soldiers over 8 meters wide. It resembles a carving of the Norse El Jotun Sartor. I'm hoping I said that right. Uh, what? What? At the Norse Eld Jotun Surter, or Surt. Uh, Surt. yes. You're thinking Jotun Surt. Yeah, Jotun yeah. Surt. Yeah. Yeah. The okay, the so... J uh Nor Norse terms the J is pronounced like Y. Ah. Like fjord, Jorther, right. Jormungandr. Right. <laughs> Dating of the, of the. Shradum encasing SP eleven seventy nine indicates it dates to the Mississippian sub period of the Carbon Fisheries period, approximately three five nine point two to three three hundred and eighteen point one million years ago. This age is consistent with the geological age of this region. SP eleven seventy nine has since demonstrated the ability to change shape at will and become invisible and without form appearing as a giant flying shade. Photographic evidence has failed to produce a conclusive image of SB-1179 due to inexplicable camera feed disruptions, operator panic, and physical disruption of cameras. Expeditionary teams have described SB-1179 as having hellfire for eyes and generally having great height. Its body often is seen as a combination of fire, smoke, and hardening lava. From there, the descriptions begin to diverge wildly. Survivors generally describe its head as monstrous, with some entering curved horns consistent with the original form of SB-1179. Others argue it has fangs larger than a man's arm, so others state that SB-1179 neither, has neither horn horns nor fangs and its face is encircled by flames with reach which reach down into a long beard of fire eyewitnesses cannot agree whether or not it has wings most agreed that it is usually armed with a multi-tailed whip of flame and a glowing red sword with several a uh, glowing red sword of fire several meters in length though it will it will at times appear with either the whip or or a sword, or neither. Though of great size, it is apparently capable of moving both quickly and quietly. Those few who survive encounters with SB-1179 generally describe it as sm smelling of rotten eggs and old chimneys. Chemical analysis of air samples taken from SB-1179's breath has shown exceptionally high concentrations of carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide. There you go. So it's literally a giant demon, nor uh, a Norse demon. Not the best term for it, but understandable. Um. Uh. Also, I see images of it, and it's literally dis destroyed places it's been to. Like, rows were cracked to bits. And the ground smoking. Forces turned to, like, branches. So, yeah, this guy is very destructive. That's to be expected by one of the most well-known uh, devourers. Yeah. Um... Uh, I I guess my biggest hang up here is I don't know the extent of how dangerous he can be. Okay, so I know he can shape shift. He can mess with electrical equipment. He has oh, a yeah, weapon. The, well, shape shift, mess with electrical equipment. That's just like base standard for any ghost. If you talk to people, like Not ghost. In terms of big weapon, big big sword. Technically, ghosts can one up it because ghosts can also move shit. 
Yeah. But, well, then, tech, well, what? My fucking brain. Okay, so. How much, like, overall destruction, like, is actually being demonstrated? By this thing and some of those things that you were talking about. And the pictures? Hold on, I can actually just take the pictures itself. Hold on. I can show you the pictures. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Fuck off phone. I don't want to highlight the picture. Alright. Hold on a moment. Go to stream planning. 